Hey, Nick Pappas, episode number 19. You're joining us here at The Mentors with Clinton and also Matt LaHood. Say hello, boys. Nick Pappas in the house. How are hey, you? Hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> the architect. <laughs> Mate, how are you? We, we, we caught up with you initially back in episode number six. Um, yeah. And uh, if you remember, Nick, at the time uh, you were talking about what does success look like for us and whatever else. And uh, we thought, well, let, let's talk about you and see how things have been going for you this year. Um, and how your success has uh, been in 2018 so far? Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, it's been good, <laughs> this is how we like it's to shoot been... from the hip, authenticity. Nick, Isn't that right, Clinton? Yeah. We got you on Friday afternoon. Yeah. You've <laughs> clocked off, haven't you? I can feel it. <laughs> You're sitting down there in Maroubra nah, in one of those being, cafes. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's having a <laughs> yeah, lager. Yeah. You're sitting there in one of those I'm cafes. Having, I'm having a lager. I wish I was. Now, <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, look, truthfully, um, I suppose. You know, 2018. Has, yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm just in a bit. He's yeah. <laughs> exchanging he's on a deal. Going. It sounds like you're selling yeah, something yeah. pride or no, look, You know what? 2018 has been pretty good, actually. I, I must say, like, from a business level, um, for me, it's probably the marketplace that I enjoy most as to where we're at. Like, it's a real real estate market. So, just from actual marketplace, I think that's great because I think, you know, for any. And I'd like to consider myself a good agent. It lets me actually um, put my best skills out there to the marketplace, you know what I mean? And actually work with what people need. So I actually really enjoy this. Like it makes me feel like a, you know, like a real estate agent. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, 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 totally. Someone that stands at an open house on the weekend because uh, they're, you know, trying to look busy. So, you know, in my experience, this is great. I'm loving it. Um, what, what are you saying, Nick? Could, you're, you're thinking this market's showing what agents Look, have got you know true You've skills. Really got to get and out there and, yeah, exactly. You you're know, honing like your skills actually, and using them, yeah? yeah? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, like it's actually showing people solutions to their problems. You know, like an example was I had a lady today that said, no, nah, I want a million and 50. I want a million and 50. And I'm like, Look, <laughs> the property is probably worth 900 to 950. And she's like, no, it's not. And I said, okay. Look, I, I want to take on your business because her motivation was there to sell. Um, and I said, the only way I'm going to do it is I said, I want me and you to walk around and look at three or four other properties similar to yours. I want you to see the prices. And then if you still think it's worth a million and fifty, then you know what? You put up the marketing today. We'll go in and start, you know, you know, selling your property. But I said, I don't want you to waste your money marketing yep. uh, your property if you don't see the value in it. And, you know, we did that today for an hour. We looked around some apartments in Maroubra and she came back and said, Nick, I, now I know my property's not worth that much. Um, and I'm happy to sell it at you know 900 to 950. You know, See, but, mate, that's yeah, that's really that's good. what real real estate agents do. Absolutely. Sorry, yeah. Clouds, just jumped in on you there. No, 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 um, no it's true. But, yeah, yeah. But mate, Nick, to take my hat off to you there because most agents, and I'm I'm not saying you know like most agents would not have that because it's harder to do what you did. It's a lot easier to say, mm. look, a million and fifty, no problem. Press hard, second copy's yours. Just give us a check, and we'll talk on the last day before the auction. Um, yeah. You know, and then. It's a terrible relationship from day one, right? To do what you've done, you could get her a million bucks now and you're going to be the superstar of her life, you know? Correct. And you and, probably and, will and that, knowing the way you work, mate. You'll probably work as hard as you can and get more than 950. But the reality is, is at least you know you've told her and she's going to trust you now because if nine, 943 comes in and that's the best offer, mm. you know, after three weeks of marketing, she's taking that offer, right? Correct. And, and taking yeah. the time to act, gonna, yeah. Feel bad taking the money. Correct. Like Correct. Four or five grand is a lot of money for a you know seventy year old lady. Oh, it's an older lady too, is it? That's even. I mean, doesn't matter what age, but you know, that's every dollar counts to you know who's sort of in their retirement, and that's really important. That's that's the reality. You know what I mean, guys. So that's I don't know. I love this type of money. So, mate, that took you an hour out of your life, really, to do that. Did a couple of hours. To drive her around, show some Yeah, problems. look, it did. It took me an hour, you know. Mate. We went out to Mascot. We went out. Okay, mate, you know and what? Like, like, I like bet you built rapport day. in that couple of hours too, did you? Yeah, I did. And you know what? She brought the neighbour with her, right? So this is really good. The neighbours <laughs> come back and said, you know what? He's telling you the truth. So, like, I've actually 
potentially third party. Yeah, a third party. Client. I thought you were going to say the neighbour listed but their house with you as well. Wants to sell the neighbour. <laughs> I think she'll be coming to talk to me. You know <laughs> <what I mean? laughs> so tell her to bring no, all the neighbours. You should have said bring three more. Hey Nick, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Kenton here. No, but that's how it works, guys. You know, like it's just funny. Like you don't know how the universe works. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like do you get what I'm trying to say? Like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you do the right thing. Cool. You be honest, you show people, yeah. you know, reality, you, you sit down, you have good conversation, meaningful conversations with people. Yeah. All of a sudden, your business starts to grow. And this is the best time that your business can grow. In like, this type of market. If you through this yeah. market as a salesperson, <laughs> you're going to be writing big dollars come in the next three, four years when the market turns again. Exactly. Nick, quick question for you, mate. When when you made yeah. that decision to take her um, around for an hour, so clean, is yeah, that clean? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you can you speak up because I just couldn't hear you very well. Sorry, hey, mate. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, when when you made that decision to take her around for an hour, did any thoughts cross your mind of whether you should do this or not? Or was it just naturally like, yeah, I'm going to do it because it's the right thing? Nah, because the way I looked at it, Clint, she wanted to work with me. This is the way I looked at it, right? Um. I don't look at what I'm worth an hour, but I know what the deal's worth to me as an agent, right? And I said, you know what? In an hour, I'm either going to get her off my back and she's going to go with another agent and come back in three months. Re- realistically, that's w- what I thought. Or I'm going to do business with her today. And I'm not kidding you. She came back to my office an hour after I dropped her back off at home. She walked over to my office and said, Nick, you know, I want to sign up. I want to do this. And I said, look, I'm, and I'm, truthfully, I was actually meeting with another agent to interview him to come and work with me. And I said, look, can, can I come over and see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock? And she said, yeah, that's fine. So, like, you know, like for me, she's now coming back to me and wants to do business with me. And I'd rather do business with people like that than me chasing people to do business with them 100%. that we're not on the same page. Yeah. Isn't you know it, what um, I mean? It's a good question you asked though, Clinton, because like, you know, you sort of think, um, you know, should I just do this for this once or is that just the way you are? Mm. What what you're saying in actual fact is it's just best off to be authentic all the time yeah. rather than just yeah. just cut the situation but, to suit the person. Yeah. And the other thing too, Nick, what you've done too is um you've you've put yourself in a in a moral situation now where you when when, when the truthful price comes in, you're gonna feel really good about saying that the other thing too is the market's not gonna waste its time coming through the property either. So the buyers aren't no. going to waste their time, Correct. you know, thinking they're not going to buy. It's overpriced. So you've actually done a dual role, you know. And 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 you yeah, know, like I think. Yeah. Sorry, just Danny, coming back Danny, to you, Matt. Sorry, yeah. so I think when you employ a real estate agent, you, you're employing them to make to help you make a decision. Like, you know, we're right impartial. Like, yeah, yeah you know, what I mean, like I, yeah. I went to someone's house today as well. We signed up another property over in Pagewood, and and they were. Listing machine. <laughs> See you next week, man. Yeah. No, it's been a mad month, man. I'm telling you. Having a bad month. But no, the thing is, too, like it's it's sort of like you know talking to those people that want to sell in this market. These these particular owners were sort of under some financial pressure, and they just said, "Look, you know, we don't know what to do. We're going to get divorced." This is no joke, guys. It was a really hard conversation. I haven't had a conversation like this with a vendor in probably sort of probably nine years because. The market's been so good. Really, yeah. financial mm-hmm. pressure has never caused this problem, right? So, it was interesting. Uh, I took my assistant with me, Eva, who's you know 21 years old, and obviously doesn't have probably the life experience that you know I've had in real estate and you know everything else. And she was listening, and they said, you know what, we're, we're on the brink of divorce. And I said, over a house. And they said, yeah. And I said, so you're going to lose your kids, four kids, husband. You're going to let go of all that because of your your mortgage. And she goes, yeah. And I said, so, you know, what's, what's the house worth? She goes, probably 1.8. And I said, what's your mortgage? She goes, 1.2. I said, so you've got $600,000 equity and it's that bad that you're going to let go of all your family mm. to, you know, and, and walk away with $600,000, you know? That's right. But like, some, like, like, like sometimes people don't, like when they're in a really bad place like that, they don't understand that. You know they what don't I mean? think properly. So mm. life experience, teaches you to ha- how to help people. And for me, it wasn't about signing that listing up straight away today. Mm. It, I actually went there knowing the situation to say, guys, what are you thinking? You know what I mean? Like you can actually sell the house, buy something and have a mortgage of $400,000, but you're not going to live in a house. You're going to live in a townhouse, but that's not bad. You know what I mean? That's right. And like, you're still together and you're, you're a family and you're a unit. 
Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, and then sometimes people need to hear those things. And I think as agents, sometimes we're just thinking about going in there, signing things up and selling them. But, you know, that, that helps them make a decision today and say, you know what, we're going to sell and we're going to sell in a good place. We're going to be yep. happy about selling. We're not going to be selling under duress or pressure. Yep. You know what I mean? It's, it's interesting. Like, it's Clint here again, Matt. Um, but a lot of what I hear in between the lines of what you're saying is the attention to what each client actually needs. Um, so, you know, with the first lady, it's, you know, having a realistic expectation of where the market is. With the second couple, it's like being able to find a solution around, you know, the financial situation. But being, you seem to be very well connected with what each person actually needs and then how you can come in to provide a solution on that. Yeah. How to, solve the, to, how to solve their challenge, their problem. Yeah. Yep. But that's all most people want. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That, that's exactly right. I, th- I think, you know. What you're saying, Nick, is absolutely true. Is like the, the game is to actually work out how can I solve their problem, um, come from yeah. a place of kindness, come from a place of empathy, right? Yeah. And 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 see what's best for them. So what's what? Why should they be selling or doing what they're doing for their advantage, not my own? Because mm-hmm. it's all about them, yep. not about me. You know. And I think where agents get lost in it, especially in a in a tightening market, they need a listing or they need a sale. It always becomes about them. And not about the client, and they lose they lose that. Yeah. So um, it's no wonder why you're doing so well, Nick. You know what I mean? Because you're coming from a good place every time you're putting yourself in that situation. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, you know? And I, like I think that makes a difference to people. But yeah, like I was just saying, as two thousand eighteen been for me as an agent, great um, from a personal perspective as well. Pretty good. Like you know, I'm I'm doing a few things for myself now, which I mean you've been talking about, Claudio. Yep. Um, but more or less around, um, you know, uh, like how can I say to you, um, you know, what what we've been doing together yes. um, has taught me as well yeah. about where I'm going in my business and in my life. Yeah, you know cool. what I mean? So, cool. you know, I've started to do a few things for myself. Like I've, I said, I'm going to learn something new. Yeah. So I've actually, you know, involved myself to do golf lessons, which I did the first time with Clint. Like, awesome. I didn't know how to play we'll have golf, a boys' weekend. Go Matt, see, you yeah. gotta, I was telling Matt before that I had this. He, he, Matt's been in Barrel today, right? And I said to Matt, I remember going to Barrel, and I was there with the boys six, seven years ago. Nick, right? And I said I had the most amazing pork knuckle at the German restaurant, and we went on a golf yeah. weekend with the boys. So next time we we, we go to play a little, I'm going to do a golf in. thing. I'll get you involved. You come with me. Yeah, we just got to get Matt LaHood to golf. Just to play. Like I can only tee off. I don't know about anything else. Yet. <laughs> Last time, worry, I'm still looking for my balls as well. A, a, a swung a golf thing. There. I, I hit the big ball, which was the earth. That's yeah. all I could yeah, hit. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't connect the little one. Boys will be boys. Boys uh, will be boys. But, um, but, yeah, Nick, but no, look, man, life in general is good, man. I think it's excellent. what you make of it. Because you, know? you came from a big place. And if we remember back in episode six, you know, you were working at Fairfield. You went through a breakdown. You've, you, you came into Century 21, Maruba. You've been there for a little bit less than three years. And I'd done some research the other day. And you're number one in Maruba at the moment, the number one agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now yeah. that's selling. Agent. Yeah, selling agent, right? Whatever you want and to call. And there is other good agents in Maruba. There's I'm better listers, like, are there, than you? I You're just a number one selling it's agent. It's like selling <laughs> listing two today. You know, we've caught him on a on one of his slow days. <laughs> but um, congratulations, yeah. Nick. You, you can see why you are number one, mate. Your demeanour and the way Thanks, you're approaching it, um, yeah, is is the key. Yeah, and, and and can I just uh, ask you this, Nick, for you? Because I, I get a lot of people saying, "Oh, you know," I, and and you know. You work for Century 21 and, and there are some agents mm. out there sometimes that I work with going, oh, I work in an agency and, and, and the brand's not good. And But obviously, you know, you, you, you've, you, you've proven that it's it's not about the brand. It's about you, the person and, and, and hearing. I'll tell you the truth. I think, I think Matt LaHood's proven that because – and one thing that I've spoken to Matt about as well is, you know, Matt's brand is called the agency, right? Yep. So, you know, it's about the agent, yep. not the brand. You are the brand. Correct. Yep. Does Abs- that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. So, so people that blame the brand are looking for reasons. I totally agree. To Look, the brand's someone. an identifier. There's some great, like Century 21's a great brand, you know, Hookers, yeah. Ray White, Rain and Horn, but it's only as good as the well, people guys, driving it, isn't it? Correct. That's the reality. Yeah. You've seen some Look, sensational I, Hookers, LJ Hookers offices around Australia and you've seen some not so good ones. You've seen some, you know, that's yeah. just how it is. It's so all about You've seen people, some nice Hookers? You know? Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> you know the, the, the brand, the brand, it, it all, it, 
It all do, it just, no, authentic, mate. Just saying. Have you guys been picking this afternoon? <laughs> Friday afternoon. <laughs> Friday afternoon. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't really matter. All brands. You come back to this because you're not over the phone. Yeah, all brands oh, no. don't, don't, don't differ. It all comes back to the agent. You totally agree. And how they how they build their following and their, yeah. their client base and how they nurture people and repeat mm. referral business. That's a reality. Nick. Just mm-hmm. a couple of things um, because you've, you, you've had a really phenomenal year so far in 2018. You're, mm-hmm. you're number one in your core market. Um, j- just for some of the listeners out there saying, okay, well, you know, if he can do it, maybe I can do it. What would be some of the strategic things that you did just this year in 2018 so far? Because we're halfway through the year or for some people it's going to be the new Probably. financial year. What are some of the key things that you've done? Because I've, I've seen you doing a lot more, you know, you know, video, you're, you're doing podcasts, you're doing – um, a lot of different things, right? So, what, what would be mm. some of the key things that you, you you feel like? I mean, even you're doing Sunday opens. You know, most agents going, mm. I don't work on a Sunday, but you know, you're you're out there. On, so, mm. what, what would be some of the things that you felt? Look, all ridiculous? those things that I've done, I think, you know, give me some market presence and all that. But I think the biggest thing is, is probably what I've done, like for myself within my team, like just really good procedures, really good systems, easy to use checklists. So that way we don't miss anything, you know what yep, I mean? Yep, systems um, and processes. And I think that, yeah, like that's probably one thing. As far as getting some sort of exposure out there, like definitely I think videos are great. People, I've had people walk up to me and say, you know, look, I'm grateful for Clint, you know, like we, we work really well together. Thanks, I've man. had people walk up to me and say, Nick, you know what, like what we see in the video is what exactly what we're seeing out on Open Home. It feels so good. It feels like we've already met you. So, you know, it, that, that, that opens up conversations and yep. helps people talk to you and, you know, get, get, you know, it becomes a little bit easier. You're not talking business. You start talking as friends and then, you know, as friends, you start doing business. So that's what I always look at. I always look to become, I look at, like, you know, can we be friends? Yeah, we can. All right, then we can do business together. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. So yep, yep. The video lets me do that. Yes. Um, so that's probably the video. The, you know, the Sunday opens, I, I would say, would probably be, I don't get big numbers through, but the people that do come through on a Sunday yeah. are really keen to either buy or sell their place. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really loving the Sunday opens because with more stock coming on the market, let's yes. be real, how yes. many open homes can you run? Correct. And how many families can get to picking up kids from soccer, netball, football, tennis, Working on a Saturday, yep. You know what I mean? Like totally. it's impossible. So I've I've found, you know, certain properties need an open home on a like like on a Sunday, and I think my clients are pitched that. Yeah. You know? like can, I, they, can, can I tell you, uh, Nick, just um, something to uh, one of the guys that spoke at Eric this year, Tani Jan, who is, who, mm-hmm. you know, he's you know he spoke this year. He's an Indian. His background is Indian. Love that um, guy, man. That guy's awesome. Can I tell you? And he says prospecting is oxygen, right? Anyway, on Facebook the other day, he put the interview that I did with Elite Agent Magazine and uh, he wrote on there, Claudia, thank you for so much. And for that tip around doing Sunday opens, he goes, that is working no unbelievable. Yeah. I said, don't thank me. Think Nick Pappas. <laughs> <laughs> no, true family. No, it's good. Look, look you know what? Like, I, I work half a day on Sunday. Yep. My family on a Sunday likes to sleep in. Yep. Um, so I can sit around the house and laze around. Or, and I'm, I'm not the public bloke that can sit still for too long, as, as you know. Yeah. So, I'll get up, I'll go do my opens, I'm home by lunchtime, then I'll spend the rest of the day with my kids and my wife at the park or whatever we do yeah. on a Sunday. Um, you know what I mean? And then I take Wednesday off so I can give them some time or half a day. So I'm still I'm still spending time with my family, you know what I mean? That's yep. so it's good. balancing yep. it all, you mm. know? It's not like you're going to work seven days a week mm. and do nothing else but work. That's nah. not a good business model either. No, 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 exactly, exactly. And, uh, and Nick, it was, it was funny, like even another guy that I was talking to the other day and he was saying, he was going to start to do Sunday opens as well, but he had like nine opens on a Saturday. But out of the Sunday ones that he was going to do, he was only going to choose, I think, three. And I just sort of said, just choose the ones where the, the vendors are motivated, mm. number one. Number two, prices yeah. aligned with the marketplace. So you haven't got an overpriced listing because you don't want to do a Sunday open. It's overpriced. No one's going to turn up. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I said, so choose carefully the ones that you are going to open on a Sunday. You know, don't just put all nine of them. Choose maybe the ones that you feel are definitely going to be because I think what's more important today is having those properties at a sweet spot, yeah. you know, in price that's going to attract, you know, buyers to come in, it's yeah. going to create some interest and then create some competition, hopefully get, you know, top dollar for the home for the vendor. But I think that's super crucial having that sweet spot. So, you know, if you're out there listening and thinking, oh, I'm just going to go do Sunday opens and that's going to be the silver bullet to getting property sold. No, no, no. There's a couple of things. Yeah, make it's sure not for you, everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's not for everybody, mm. but just make sure if you do, vendors got to be motivated. Mm. Number one, they want to sell. Like, you know, there's vendors out there at the moment going, I need to sell. I bought another property, so please yeah. help. Yeah, so exactly. that's number one. Number two is, is is someone where 
they're listening to you on price because you know what? If your vendor's here and your price is here and you're aligned, you're not going to get a sale. Yeah, totally you need to make agree. sure you're totally yeah. aligned on price. So, mm. um, but um, no, that's awesome. So, Nick, mate, well done on a phenomenal six months this year, and congratulations cool. on being ranked number one in uh, in Maroubra, which is which is super cool. Um, love doing what you're you're doing. A- any any plans between now and the end of the year that you you want to sort of do with your business and your team at all that you're going to be focusing on? But just growing the team. Um, really trying to get that 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 super team model. Um, get some others to grow with us, and and just yeah, that that's probably my biggest goal at the moment. Just getting that super team that we've been discussing in our you know private stuff we've been talking yep. to Claudia. Yep. Um, I think it's about just getting that one more person in my team to work under me and with me. You know yep. what I mean? Like yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah. on our listings together. Um, and just yeah, growing. Like just growing at a natural rate, you know, like, uh, yeah, like things beautiful. are good at the moment. So I don't want no, to. beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. And can yeah, I ask I you this? Myself, yeah. As as um as you as you as you're doing this, let me ask you this, okay? Mm. Do you feel like you have more work life balance now? Yeah, I think I do, man. Because I, you know what, like I really think that I don't put that unnecessary pressure on myself. Like I've realised that, you know, if I can put something in my diary as a listing, I can put it in my diary as I'm going out for lunch with a friend or my kids and my wife or whatever, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, like, it's just balancing it all. But I think I'm lucky because I've, I've built a good team around me as yeah. well. And that's what, that's what really makes the difference. I mean, if you haven't got good people around you yep. and you're not training those people, like, you know, I, I was reading something yesterday and they were talking about training and, you know, what, what, what you do. So, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to train people. You've got to, you've got to, Coach them. You got to, you know, be their mentor. You totally. know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's and it's, yeah, yeah. And if you're not doing all that type of stuff, well, you know, you can't expect you got to invest. Yeah. You must invest in your people. That's a reality. You know? Yeah, and and it is like this is the thing that I've got here today. It's the seven C's to build a winning team: is coaching, character, communication, commitment, contagious energy, caring, and consistency. And I thought, man, that's so true. You know, so Can we I still think that? that's something that I've. <laughs> Can you repeat yeah. that? Sorry, yeah, I didn't that was that. awesome. Can you repeat Come it on. one more time, really slowly? Yeah, yeah. It was coaching. Um, so the seven C's to build a winning team: is coaching, character, communication, commitment, uh, contagious energy, caring, and consistency. Um, and I think when I looked at that, yesterday, mind blowing, was, mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Seven great traits. Yeah. Oh, look, that's just awesome. So good. Yeah, amazing. That's like, and that's the truth. So you know, I've, I think I've, I finally. Realized that I had to do that like a while ago without even realizing it, if that makes sense. Yep, and I think yep. I'm really lucky that I've got good people around me. I think without them, I wouldn't be able to have a good life yep. and a successful business. And a good, you know, like, and, and success is different to everybody, right? Success is some people, it's all, it's all about money. Some people, it's all about, you know, having time with their family. Others, it's traveling. Yeah. Everyone's got a different way of looking at success. So, totally. For me, my success is at the moment awesome. I'm, I'm grateful. Good on you, mate. Hey, listen. Nick, thanks for joining us back here from episode six. Now you've come back. We checked in with you. You've been on episode number 19, which is super cool. And and congratulations once again on uh, your amazing achievements this year with you, your team, and everyone else. Um, you've, you've been doing great. And, and also, you're in a great space at the moment. Like you said, definition for everyone is different. And from what I can hear, your definition sounds like you're happy, which is super cool. Mate, uh, wishing yeah. you all the best through uh, 2018. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you for all your support and help as well, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.